Hey, hey, it's Miss Barb and Mr. Dave. We're here for another lesson and we're going to kind of speed things up this week. We are in the middle of Lent, but we're going to bring it all the way through um, Holy Week and right to the tiptoes hours before Easter Day morning. So um, lots to do. So put your little seatbelt on and um, come with us and I'll give you a, a, a idea of what we're going to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen. I'm sharing it. And what I want to show you is we've been working on Lent the whole time. And so we started out at Ash Wednesday and then we were together on the third Sunday of Lent. We're going around the bend again. And all the last week of Holy Week is called, well, it's called Holy Week, but it starts with Palm Sunday. And that's when Jesus rides a donkey into Jerusalem and everybody's going Hosanna 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 on the highest and then they he does he spends the week with his disciples and he does um, cleans out some temple he gets a little angry and then um, on Thursday he does the last supper with the bread and the wine which is very much like our communion and then on Good Friday he passes away he's he's crucified and so we're going to talk a little bit about that it's a, it's a weird day name for something terrible that happened, but um, as Dave's going to say in a second, it, it was God's plan. And then on Holy Saturday is the day that there's no God on earth. He's, he's, um, was put in a, in a, in a cave and um, we're waiting to see the results. But on Easter, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, um, we know that something good has happened. But Mr. Dave, what about the names? We, we start with um, Palm Sunday after your family, the Palmers, and then Monday, Thursday, and then Good Friday. Yep. So we've got um, uh, a very busy week there, as you said, a lot of action. And one of the things about Holy Week is it goes from these really hot, these highs where everybody's like, Jesus is the best, da, 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 and then to Good Friday and then back up to Easter. So it's this real roller coaster ride. And um, the other thing we just want to say is we know that the story when Jesus gets crucified and dies is very sad and can be kind of scary. Um, and, you know, if it's a little frightening to you, that's okay. Um, but just remember that it's all part of God's plan. And that's what Jesus is doing is sort of dying uh to redeem our sins uh but it's okay if it's a little spooky each year on good friday i i uh have a little trouble with with the imagery and and picturing jesus up on the cross but then we get to easter and it's all good right right thanks dave for that um reminder now what we're going to do is we're going to start off we got to warm up our brains so we have a word search there for you and take a look at that and then as we walk with Jesus along the way to his death, each of those very famous places are, are, has a Roman numeral. So I wanted to make sure that we all knew our Roman numerals. Mr. Dave always knows his Roman numerals, but Miss Barb, I, I'm a little flaky. So um, every year I kind of dust off my knowledge of my Roman numerals. So it might be real easy for you or something you haven't had yet. So take a look at that. But let's start off with the Palm Sunday. That's, you know, Jesus is just coming into town. He's coming into Jerusalem. And he's not even quite there yet. He's in a, a little um, place called Bethpage. And so what we want to share with you is that this is what happens at, at St. Mary's when we can get together. And we, we, do, we do a parade just like um, it was. We have palms there in some of theirs. We have the choir, everybody's following. So if, if on um, the um, Palm Sunday, you wanna get with your family and walk around and wave some branches, that would be perfectly fine. That would be a good thing to do. And I yeah, just the wanna other thing, uh, just real quick, Miss Barb, is uh, they held palms, but they also held olive branches. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. On, yeah. On, on, on the first palm. Yeah, Sunday. these pointy ones are the palms, but you know, and, whatever is around I think would be okay to it's just announcing and um, they were saying um, but but let me let Mr. Dave read the lesson before you hear what 
what they were all gathering. So Mr. Dave, you want to take care and read that yeah. to us? Please? So this is a reading from the Gospel of Mark. You remember we have four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and they all talk about the Easter story in some way. So this is from Mark. Jesus and his followers were coming closer to Jerusalem. They came to the towns of Bethpage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives. There Jesus sent two of his followers. He said to them, go to the town you see there. When you enter it, you will find a colt tied which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here to me. If anyone asks you why you're doing this, tell him the master needs the colt. He will send it back soon. The followers went into the town. They found a colt tied in the street near the door of a house, and they untied it. Some people were standing there and asked, what are you doing? Why are you untying that colt? The followers answered the way Jesus told them to answer, and the people let them take the colt. The followers brought the colt to Jesus. They put their coats on the colt, and Jesus sat on it. Many people spread their coats on the road. Others cut branches in the fields and spread the branches on the road. Some of the people were walking ahead of Jesus. Others were following him. All of them were shouting, praise God. God bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. God bless the kingdom of our father, David. That kingdom is coming. Praise to God in heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. When he looked at everything, and since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the 12 apostles. Okay, thank you, Mr. Dave. So we're getting, um, Jesus is just coming into town and um, everybody's excited. They're all excited for him. And man, the picture changes in the, in the next days ahead. But what I want to share with you is a map. And this is something, it's, it's a couple of weeks before Easter. So we, you have time to go and look at this. But as you walk the days of, in your chart, Take a look at this map. This is happening all within that Thursday and Friday of um, Holy Week. And so what happens is, is up here in, we heard Beth Page and Bethany, that's where he was on Sunday. And then where he actually met with his disciples in, and they had a last supper, which it's what, it's where Jesus breaks the bread and shares it with his disciples and then drinks a cup just like we do in communion when we are able to have communion and that was done in something called the upper room we don't know exactly um, how big it was but we think it's a very small space on a second floor and that's where he was then after that you can follow it that is number one Number two is where he goes to the garden to pray. Jesus is always, before any big thing, he's always praying just the way we should be doing. And then he's arrested. And then he um, is, is brought to the house of Ananias. And there they make sure, you know, oh, I don't want to do it. You do it. Whose jurisdiction it's in. And then they finally decide that it's um, Caiaphas's jurisdiction. And so, um, he, he says, I want to, so, you know, this is not all on the up and up. They wanted to crucify um, Jesus because he was a threat to their leadership. And so, you know, they figured out how they could do that. And Caiaphas wants to crucify him, but he can't do it. He doesn't have the guidelines to do it. So he sends him to Herod. And so he goes over to Herod. And Herod is actually the Roman person who can um, take... Um, and sentence him. So he's he goes and gets sentenced by Herod in number six. And then from number from time he's sentenced to death all the way to the time that he dies, he um, those are what we're going to talk about the stations of the cross. So we're going to get into that detail. I just wanted to give you a picture is is there's a lot going on in Holy Week. They're moving around and doing things. They had actually gone to the temple, which is over here on Monday. And so take a look at that, especially um, as, you, as you do your Middle Eastern studies. There's This is what Jerusalem looked like then, but there's just layers and layers and layers of it now. So um, that's something really interesting to take a look at. And as Ms. Barb said, there were a lot of different authorities there. There were the Jewish authorities, then there was the Roman authorities, and the, the, the guy who was kind of like the governor from Rome, Pontius Pilate, was the one who ultimately said, all right, 
go crucify him. But he didn't almost want to do it. And it was this weird sort of situation where in Pontius Pilate, there's a phrase where he says, I'm going to wash my hands of this, basically. It's not my problem anymore. So it's this weird interaction going on with these different groups of people, all of whom kind of want to get rid of Jesus, but maybe they don't want to be the ones who are responsible for getting rid of Jesus. Right, right. And that's important because, you know, <laughs> finally someone had to do it, but they look like they were swapping back and forth. Now, these are the stations of the cross. I want to read them as kind of our gospel lesson today. And what we want to do is notice these are the Roman numerals in the corner. And what I'll just go ahead and read them pretty quickly is that um, number one is Jesus is condemned to death, like we were just saying. And then number two is Jesus accepts the cross. Number three is Jesus falls for the first time. Jesus falling is, is, is something, and it's going to happen three times, and we all know that the number three means to pay attention. And then at the fourth station, Jesus meets his mother, which is a very touching moment, especially as a mom, that, he, you know, she, he, both of them know that something's not good is going to happen, but to see the mom, Mary, at the end is, is just probably precious. And then another person comes into his um, area on number five is Simon of Serene. He happened to be in the area that day and goes, what's all this commotion? And he's one of the few people that did the right thing. He saw Jesus sweating and pulling. The cross is, is huge. It's obviously taller than Jesus is. And so it's very heavy. And he picked up the cross and helped Jesus. All these other people are, didn't do the right thing. So... Um, we have to remember um, Simon and Cyrene for that. And then um, Veronica wipes his face. Once again, all the other people could have helped, but Veronica is the one who um, said Jesus and wiped his face. And that was an important, showed him, compa showed him compassion. Then Jesus falls one more time. And then the next in station number eight, Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. And so they'll come back um, on Easter morning and have a different result. And then for the, the third time, Jesus um, falls and Simon um, helps him up and carries his cross. And then on the 10th station, it talks about Jesus is stripped of his clothes. And then the 11th station that he's crucified. And then on the 12th station, is that he dies. We think at some point in between 12 and three. And so you can take these sections, you can do a couple of them at a time or read them all through just the way we are. But it's important on Good Friday um, to kind of to slow down and take a look and pray about what, what's happening here. And right, Ms. Barb mentioned between noon and 3 p.m. That's when this all occurred way mm -hmm. back when. And so those are the what they call the three holiest hours in the Christian mm -hmm. church between noon and 3 p.m. So on Good Friday, it's really important, even if you're not necessarily going to be in church the whole time, but a lot of churches do have a three-hour service, but you kind of don't do, you kind of do something that's a little, you know, more serious or, you know, you don't want, don't really want to have fun during that time because you're remembering this was like the darkest hour. Or you can read yeah, yeah. your Bible story of what happened right. and that's, that's, and pray, you know, that's another way to observe it. And then on the 13th station, the, the body of Jesus is taken down from the cross and where we're going to leave it for today is Jesus is laid in the tomb. And so from there, those are the stations of the cross. And so I think it's really important every year to read them and go through them. If we were in the church, if anybody remembers, there are these big paintings all the way up and down uh, the sides of the church. And so what I'm going to share with you, Mr. Dave, I didn't know these were here until a couple of years ago. And Mr. Dave, um, why don't you walk us through? These are the stations sure. of the cross at Santa Maria. Yeah. So I think uh, a lot of you know that we have a special relationship with another Episcopal church mm -hmm. in the neighboring town of Falls Church called uh, Iglesia Santa Maria, which means Santa Maria Church. 
Um, and they are great people over there and we have such a good relationship with them. And what's really neat is they have, uh, actually they have a, a pretty large piece of land right next to their church. And a couple of years ago, we worked with them to help sort of clean it up. And they decided to put a Stations of the Cross there. And um, what one of our parishioners did, her name is Peggy Parker, and she's the one who uh, drew the pictures that Miss Barb referred to that go up and down the side aisles of our church. Well, they made sort of copies of those and put them on uh, signs that are, you know, all weather. And so they have a Stations of the Cross and you sort of walk this trail. And then at the very top, there's this big cross. Um, and so you can see oh, wow. so actually three crosses and we'll, we'll yeah. if you read the story, Jesus was cru crucified in the middle, but on, on either side of him were these two criminals. Um, and so if you see, um, you know, what we just walked through, um, it matches what Miss Barb just said of, you know, where he's stripped of his clothing, where he's crucified, where he dies, where he's taken down put in the tomb and all and all that so um we're gonna uh, um remind your your parents to maybe go visit this either on good friday or on holy saturday doesn't take very long but it's a really nice thing to do um, and it's outside it's outside, safe so it's, yep, it's running safe. and you know it, it's a good thing i think um Whichever one you want to go with your family, whether it's the stations here or the ones at Santa Maria, it's, I think the important thing is to remember to observe um, this Holy Week in, in special ways. I know that Miss Allison is going to send us some things to share with you, and um, if you're traveling, be safe. But all in all, as we go through these final days of Lent, it's important to slow down and remember that um, Jesus did. He came and died for us, and this is when he did it. And so we, we put him in the tomb right now as, as the last piece of Lent, and we're not supposed to know what happens, but I just have to share with you that come Easter morning, the women come to the, the big rock, and it's um, rolled away, and an angel is there basically saying, He's risen. So I just want to, I always have to leave you on a, on a positive note, even though it's a tough week for all of us. I think we need to make sure that we look ahead and know the good news that Jesus is risen. So yeah. we'll talk um, in a little bit. As Father Marrow likes to say, in order to get to Easter, you have mm -hmm. to go through Good Friday. So you kind of yeah. have to have the low point to make the high point of Easter that much more meaningful. Mm -hmm. So we're going to leave you there. There's lots and lots to do. I hope you're having a good week and we have a couple more weeks until so you can get these lessons in. And then um, on April 4th is the actual Easter day for 2021. So we're excited about that. And um, it's been a long went. And so maybe um, some of you gave up some things. Some people added some things. Some people are giving away things. Other people are, you know, just doing whatever it does. And I think that's a good lesson to learn. So um, it's really important to spend these times, especially in the last couple of weeks, is even if, you know, no matter what happened the first 30 days, the last 20 are important too. Yep. So on behalf of all of us um, here, Mr. Dave and I um, have a holy last um, holy week and um, we'll um, talk to you on the other side on Easter morning. Yeah. Take care and have a good couple of weeks. Bye. Bye. Bye.